I'm joined today by Aaron Aubrey Kaplan, who's been a journalist covering black issues for 25 years, including nine and a half as a staff writer for L.A. Weekly. The new book is I Heart Obama. Uh, Aaron, it's so great to have you on. You know, we've been looking at the sort of racial dynamics of the Democratic primary for a while now. Uh, and right. we've seen that in spite of all the back and forth on the issue, Hillary Clinton has been able to keep what we saw in early polling, overwhelming support from the non-white electorate. Give me your sort mm -hmm. of general sense first of what's going on and why Bernie Sanders has not done particularly well with the non-white vote. Well, I think Hillary Clinton is such a known entity. She's such a brand name. I mean, Clinton, you know, is a brand name, and Hillary Clinton has run before. She's very familiar to um, um, voters of color, especially black voters. I'm not surprised. And Bernie Sanders is, you know, look, he was a, he was really running as a protest. He didn't expect to get this far, and he's just now kind of introducing himself to um, to um, you know uh, a bigger electorate, a wider electorate. And so he's playing catch up. Um, but that loyalty, that, that brand loyalty to Clinton, especially amongst African Americans, especially amongst older voters, people who actually lived through Clinton, and I guess I count myself among those, not that old, but I do remember Clinton, um, is, you know, is I think going to be hard to, to break through. And, you know, we are in such rough and tumble political times right now that people, I think, may be clinging to what they know. Um, and there's this great unknown right now in. <laughs> In American politics, and so I think um, you know it's sort of like uh, uh, Clinton is a bit like comfort food. Should we be concerned about that? In the sense of, I mean, we know that on the Republican side, there are so many people who are supporting candidates whose values and positions seem to mm -hmm. be sort of in direct conflict with their actual ideals. I mean, certainly the the Donald Trump candidacy and his supporters are a great example of that. But maybe mm -hmm. we would like to think that on the on the Democratic side, on the more progressive side. We would have voters saying, OK, here's what matters to me. Let me actually look at the track record of Hillary Clinton on issues that affect disproportionately minority communities and then look at the track record and history of Bernie Sanders. But we're seeing mm -hmm. uh, just, an, a, as you say, a brand loyalty. Should we be concerned about that? Yes, you know, uh, we should be. And unfortunately, we're asking what we're asking voters to do now is something we really they really haven't done in past elections, which is, you know, just what you said. Look, look critically at the candidates and see if they are giving you giving us what we need um, now. And, um, you know, in, in, in elections, presidential elections, people tend to vote on their emotions. And we are at a very emotional point. And I and I would hope people, you know, would employ their powers of critical analysis and and, and, and really look to see which candidate is going to be best for them. But, um, it, you know, I think there's, the stakes are so high that, that people are, um, uh, in, in some ways tend to do the opposite. But um, I have hope. I mean, I, I don't think it's a lock for Clinton. Um, I, she'll probably win the nomination. But I think this, there's, there's, there's a greater conversation being forced right now of you know, look, what it, what do we really need? You know, what 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 can we, what should we expect, and uh, what do we want, and and let's vote on that. That's something we should always be doing. Let's face it, but we we don't we don't. And uh, right now, the, the stakes are very high, and um, um, so uh, we really, well, you know, it, that's something we should do. And I think Bernie Sanders is winning over some um, voters of color. Um, it's just that he's playing catch up, and. Um, uh, you know, if you look, if you look at the, you know, if you look at the platforms, at the agendas. I mean, I, I personally think Bernie Sanders has more to offer, but people are very fearful about uh, who can win, who can win this race, and um, the, the the idea of a Trump presidency frightens so many of us um, that uh, uh, we'd be more willing to vote for Clinton perhaps than 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 we ordinarily would be because she looks, you know, like she could, she's more likely to to beat Trump. Some people say the although it doesn't I, seem like by and large the poll, polls sort of support that assertion, do they? I mean, depending on what polls you look at to the extent that we can sort of trust any polls at this point in the race in the hypothetical okay. matchups, there's really no evidence that Hillary Clinton has a better shot against Trump, which is one of the more sort of concerning uh, uh, elements to me of the idea that, hey, it, aside from whether we agree more with Bernie, there's this sense mm -hmm. that Hillary Clinton is more electable. The data doesn't seem to bear that out. You know, you're absolutely right. This is conventional wisdom. That, like so many, so much conventional wisdom this year is going out the window. Actually, I think 
the latest poll reflected that Bernie Sanders, if you you know, could beat Trump, that yeah. he was actually ahead of ahead of Trump in the polls. I don't know if uh, 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 if Hillary um, is showing the same thing, but this this is the X factor here. All the polls, all the you know, all the predictions, even from people like you know Nate Silver, who is you know um, always right, is not turning out to be right. So we're we are really uh, going into the unknown, and so people. Um, you know, uh, hopefully that people might, hopefully they, they will vote their conscience and vote and vote the candidate that, you know, can best lead the country as opposed to, you know, who can, who, you know, who's more electable. Um, uh, it's, it's very, I have to say, it's, it's fascinating to watch all this. Um, frightening, but fascinating. And Aaron, you know, in your book, you write extensively about the Obama presidency. The book, of course, is I Heart Obama. You talked earlier in this interview sort of about the association, the brand association between Hillary Clinton and former President Bill Clinton and sort of the impact that that may have on minority voters. What about mm -hmm. the association between Hillary Clinton and President Obama, right? Although she initially ran against him in the primary in 2008, ultimately mm -hmm. uh, President Obama's secretary of state for many years. Is that an association, a, a brand association, for lack of a better term, that is also important? Yeah, that's really interesting, too. I mean, now uh, people are saying, oh, now Hillary's really trying to ally herself with uh, Barack Obama in a way she actually didn't while she was, um, you know, serving secretary of state. Um, not, you know, there was a bit of a, di I always felt there was a bit of a distance between them, you know, politically and maybe personally. And, you know, remember back in 2008, you know, uh, Bill, they both, came, mostly Bill Clinton came under fire for criticizing um, 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 Barack Obama's chances of winning, basically dis dismissing him as, well, he can't win, you know, Hillary can win. And the inference was that because he was black, he wasn't electable. And people smarted about that. But um, uh, I don't know if that particular association is going to work, even though I think I think black people are loyal to Clinton on on her own. I don't know if, if she starts making the connection, that real clear connection to Barack Obama. It's a little bit fuzzy, even though it should be an obvious connection. It's not all that obvious because well, she I think sort of has, might, though, right? I mean, in, in a recent debate, yeah. she was asked, in what areas would you do something different than President Obama? And her response was basically, I would be more Obama than Obama. I would go even further <laughs> with the stuff that Obama has done. Right, right, right. Well, you know, I, I don't know if that, as a tactic, I don't know if that'll that'll help her chances. Mm. Um, um, uh, Obama himself has not officially endorsed anyone, has he? He's um, at this point just Correct. Kind of sitting it out. But, um, uh, again, I, it 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 feels like you know she's pouring it on. You know, I, I, look, she she wants to just focus on the general election. She doesn't want to be bothered with this primary stuff. Yeah. So I think she's you know she she wants to get over that hump. And um, uh, it's kind of elusive, and so I think this is one of the tools she's using, kind of like also pushing her bona fides as a first woman president. That didn't go over that great with younger women. Uh, so I think this is something she's trying. I I don't think she thought she had she would have to do this. Um, and I don't again I don't know if it'll help her with with black voters. She seems she's doing well with black voters. Um, although Bernie Sanders did did very well in Michigan, um, and the next state up I think is Ohio. So. Uh, you know, um, the tide might turn um, um, a little bit in Bernie's favor, which would keep her in the primary and keep her, you know, uh, pulling out more tools, I guess. Last thing I want to touch on, I've been increasingly hearing from two sides of Bernie Sanders supporters. On the one hand, you have the so-called Bernie or bust side, which says mm -hmm. if it's not Bernie, we're not voting for Hillary Clinton. We would even consider voting for Donald Trump over Hillary because on paper he seems to actually be to the left of her on some issues. Then you have those who say, I am supporting who I consider to be the more progressive of the two current Democratic candidates, Bernie Sanders. But if he is not the ultimate nominee, I will support Hillary Clinton, even though she's not as progressive as I would like a Hillary Clinton right. presidency is far better than a Donald Trump or Ted Cruz or whoever presidency. Take a look yeah, at well, that specifically from issues important to minorities. Is there any situation where you could say if it's not Bernie, Donald Trump makes sense over Hillary Clinton or is that bogus? No, that's bogus. I would hope that's bogus. I, I simply can't see that that uh, happening. That would be like suicide for I mean, a lot of voters of color. I'm. You know, to me, um, the whole Trump movement 
there's a lot of elements of white nationalism in there, and I just can't see um, um, people of color um, going to that side. Uh, there's just nothing. Well, the Republican Party, in my mind, is really very little to offer them, and, and, and this year particularly nothing to offer. And I don't think I don't think we would fall on our swords like that. And definitely, definitely would 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 uh, vote for Hillary Clinton out of a certain, you know, out of out of pragmatism, but also just out of self-interest. Uh, there's just simply nothing. Um, I don't think uh, anything appealing about Trump's candidacy to to black people, particularly, especially you know, given the recent you know um, uh, uh, um, uh, videos we've seen of his rallies and of, you know the way the way he treats folks at his rallies and, and people of color. It's ugly stuff, and I just I really don't see um, that happening. And and uh, you know, Clinton is a safe choice for us. I mean, I quote unquote. Um, I don't know who I'll vote for, but. You know, definitely Hillary's a much, much more attractive choice than um, someone like Trump. That's just that, that's just a no brainer to me. All right. Aaron Aubrey Kaplan. The book is I Heart Obama. She has been covering black issues for 25 years, including for nine years as a staff writer for L.A. Weekly. Aaron, so great to have you on. Thank you. Thank you, David. Good to be with you.